So, hi, ladies and gentlemen, Dave Dobbs here. It's the, um, where are we? It's the 9th of April, 2019. Um, very exciting time, really, isn't it? Because we come to three days away from the 12th. And right now, what's happening in, in Parliament, I think it's been pressured through the House of Lords. It's a massive, great game of misinformation as well that's happening with the press to manipulate you to think one thing and the other, as obviously you're well aware. <laughs> but um, it's a very, very big game going on at the moment. And, um, and we're three days away, away, away from a very big decision. And if they, if they try and crash us out, they are going to try. You know, Theresa May is desperately trying to get us out of the um, EU as quickly as possible while she still has power. Um, that's her main agenda. That was David Cameron's main agenda, in my opinion. Um, he's the one who called for the referendum. You know, as soon as you call for a referendum on, on, on Europe, you know, you're basically shooting the puppy on the carpet. There's just no two ways of getting around that. You can't then turn around and play your pro-European after you've just done something as mad as that and um this is the whole tory agenda right now to sign us up to a free trade agreement this is what i keep going on about and um and we've got some big out i'm going to bring in some a, a, a big astronomical sighting into this as well in a moment um something the third phase of the moon has just put up um well i'll just hold the i'll just very quickly flash you the image um let me just share this um Yes, it's this one here. Hopefully. Yeah, it seems you're seeing that. Um, yeah, we'll just flick through. I'm not going to play the video because I haven't got permissions to play the video. Um, but you can just see by the thumbnail on the bottom there, it, um, there's various different people that have shot it. Um, it's got this formation. These kind of lights seem to sort of like emanate from this point here and then run down each tail. Now you can see this as these lights coming out of here. So it hovers in the same position, but it slowly goes out of sight. And I think it drops down below the clouds at that point that you can't see in the sky. So I think we're getting a glimpse of it there. Now, um, you know, just well, and I put it onto this astronomical sighting. It's quite exciting because. If we, um, if, let me just come stop that share and um, share, um, come back to this video, um, come back to the last video I made. You know, and we were talking about um, understanding that there are two of, there are two of these objects. There are two twin tail objects. We're getting to, we, we, we've known this since 2013 that there's actually two of them and we're learning how to how they how and when they influence us in in this in their cycles around this um the red kachina and the blue kachina i've put here these have been coming through a specific angle it's still difficult to determine exactly what the angle of that is um, but there are various clues, as most most likely the, the the clues are, or the the the, the massive eight point eight earthquake, as I as I always say. But the massive eight point eight earthquake on the twenty seventh of February, two thousand and ten, and and then one year and thirteen days later, or a thirteen day difference in astronomical positioning going past the system here where I've got the cursor here, you know, um, planet Earth going past this point between, you know, um, we can potentially by the 11th, on the 11th of March, 2011, Fukushima 13 days later gives us a potential tra tra trajectory of something big that was influencing the Earth at that point. So we have these kind of, these ways of kind of, these possible routes of, of perspective and they do seem to corroborate with this passage of um with the passages of of these of these 
of these twin tail objects. Notably that we only ever see the twin tail objects, two twin tail objects round about this, round about this threshold anyway, number one. And um, and number two, because we just keep seeing them. <laughs> I mean, and predicting them at their passage and everything else like that. But now we've, because we had we, we've had this kind of sighting of what I believe is this coming through the ecliptic, maybe on the 2nd of March, I think, and then being seen again on the 17th here. You know, we, um, we start having this, you know, about a 15 day period. And we know that this, this will be the angle of this rotation the the ecliptic of this system compared to our own is different so it will take a longer period uh, it, it will be it would kind of be a bigger proportion of its circumference as it descends that 15 days compared to compared to um compared to the orbit of earth on on our circumference our orbital circumference so you have these things to sort of calculate, but whatever it means, it means that the rotation of, of this inner one is quicker overall. For us to see it at two points in that cycle and experience it at two points, just like that, the way we just did and have, and have that sort of timing means it's, it's traveling distinctly faster. And I would wager a guess because of the cosmic chances that the, co the cosmic coincidence that this furthest orbit has a 396 day orbit. Um, like, you know, it just came into view on the 30th. I said it would come into view on the 4th. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? The mathematics shows the 4th using the 200 day cycle, which is how I found this. But notice we drop four years back every year and it comes and it shows on the, on, on the, on the 30th. We get the pair of them on the 30th. And this is how I started to realize, I just thought, is this just a chance occurring of this repeat four day thing? Or am I just seeing it? And then when we realized it wasn't the previous smaller circle that I had going around, the, around this system here, it was actually going right around our own sun as well and right around this system as they came through each other. And that four days was because it was a 396 day complete orbit. You know, there's been this massive growing learning process. Like I, like I say sometimes, you know, it's, it's, if we had this all backwards and we had all the information up front, but we haven't, we've had these slow, steady sightings that have revealed so much. And so what this sighting of the third phase of the moon, um, Blake Cousins just, just, has just put up. If we now come forward to what... I'm going to come through, we've got the, the, I'm not going to go right through the path, the whole timeline right now, but if we just come forward to 2017, just before then, it would have been, it would have been June, June there. Becky Lewis is shot on the 26th of June, 2017. Notice where earth is here this takes 396 days to go round which means that when we come to this place in 2018 this will drop exactly on its own cycle one th exact 13th of its ro of its rotation back because it takes exactly one calendar month if you can imagine in 2018, it's going to be here. And in 2019, it's going to be here. So what that means is, if I now go forward to, you think, if, we, if we've got, um, if we, so you think if we've got um, Becky Lewis's shot, say, uh, like I say, on the 26th, of June 2017. If I then just use this to run the correlations of what that looks like, what that means now. So what this actually means is if we consider that Nibiru takes, this furthest orbiting object takes 
396 days to orbit the red kachina and the blue kachina. And on the, on what, what was the date of it? On June the 26th, I think it was the 25th, 26th um, of June 2017. I might be wrong with that date. There was a bit of confusion over that date. So you might want to check the original video with Becky, on Becky Lewis's channel if you want to get the exact details because to, to follow these correlations. I'm pretty, pretty close there. But um, if that was on the 26th of June 2017, you can understand that if we come out, if we come around now to um, to June, May, June two thousand and seventeen, it the object was actually further behind us because this moves in big chunks you know every, every kind of like it moves in in big chunks so it's a bit difficult to say and then in 2019 it will be back here if you like if we deduct one um this is 2017 24th of of june 26th of june whatever it was 2017 so if we deduct not one month because it's it's 2017 2018 2019 to go up to june if we deduct um it's, it's gonna be we haven't got quite to full june yet so it's so it'd be slightly less but if we deduct from june um or yeah from june the 20 20 from june the 26th um, that would take us, excuse me, I'll take us, when I run this, I'm always thinking, is, is it going forwards or backwards in, the, in this time? And like I say, that's why I kind of built this model, so we can kind of play with this a little bit. But it would take us to 24th of um, June, 24th of May, 24th of April. Um, and we are now on the 9th of April. So we would expect if this model is showing characteristics, we would expect this nighttime viewing to occur two months earlier because of, sorry, that's a bit of a long drawn out way of kind of getting there because I had to try and think about this movement and I still might be wrong with that. But we've been expecting it to go into our night sky you know, it's it, it, it's done it. Um, what year was that? That was June two thousand eighteen. See, see what I mean when it, came, it did it in two thousand eighteen as well. When we see, but it it is that two thousand and nineteen. Sorry. No, if I go back to um, yeah, it did it in two thousand eight. We just saw it going into the night sky, and that was in that was. Early February, uh, was, uh, that was early February, but it's still, it's still more in the daylight sky there, even, well, maybe not so much than that one. When was that? So it's getting later in that, that one. So it's getting more and more into, into the night sky. And so by that shot, February, um, late February, late March, we, kind of would expect you know we're still looking because we've had a lot of confusion with this coming past this, this point here um you know we we're looking for how whether all this thing kind of meets up and whether they all marry together whether there's um whether there's there's whether there's real evidence that they they they, they do marry together and that all our, you know, because when we start seeing this bigger picture of what we're seeing here, we start realizing that that in, in all this, in all this kind of like, um, let me just stop the share here for a shake. In all this, in all this mytho mythology here, um, that we we that we have with the, all our ancient mythology that gets passed down the line. Sorry, my light is failing. Um, but we're starting to wonder, we often wonder what is God? And 
this is what all this great mythology is is coming from i'm of a mind this 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 is evident of it that what there's something big that has affected our solar system or is affecting our solar system so i'm just going to go over to this um safari page, back to this safari page again and just very quickly um i'm just gonna go to my history a sec i hope i haven't been looking at anything too controversial <laughs> But um, strange reddish, um, the um, this video was this well this this was a, 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 a an interesting shot. It was actually shot. I think it was actually shot round about January. But um, I won't play the videos there. But you can, you can see it. You, well. Um, Let's just very quickly open that up so we just see the date. Published March. Does he say a date on there? Oh yeah, look. Something strange over. What is it? Danville, Virginia, January 2019. So we saw these again, these two these twin tails, and 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 the video maker obviously thought to um thought to make a video about it and to say this has never seen anything like this. Um, and Roger Paul kind of put me on to him actually, I see in his last video. Um, I'm trying to think where it is, maybe it's just maybe it's straight on Planet X. This, um, this shot that Alex Lusion put up um, recently, I mean, it's pretty clear, isn't it? It's pretty clear. You know, we're right next to it now. You, we're, we're going. Um, we're 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 right next to the. We're right next to the system right now. We're going. We're going. We're going right past it, and we have all these. We have all the signs and all the evidence, and the shots just fit into pretty much perfect sequence. They're all there. They're all coming in, and so. <clears throat> We have NATO and, and desperate to start a war, desperate to start a war wherever it can, whether it's going to be in Venezuela, whether it's going to be, we don't know what it's going to be, but or where it's going to be, but all the massive build up is to push for a massive, massive aggression at this time. And it seems key to this is breaking the European alliance. It really is. And forcing all of us, on both sides of the Atlantic to go into trade agreements, free trade agreements, where we surrender so much and then we just become puppets to only NATO. NATO is the only power that holds us together. And so I'm asking for help right now. I want to run in the European elections and I was praying that we would get to this point and we wouldn't leave without a deal. Obviously, we're three days, aw three days away. So right now, I'm just asking you to think about helping me because if you're on, I don't know, Technically, I can't take any um, funds for a political campaign um, from people here overseas. But um, so any money that comes in from anyone outside of the UK is, I'd like to say, I'd like to say, because it costs five thousand pounds to run in the European election, so I have to raise that. I think it's by the twenty fourth of April. So they're going to make that point between people realizing that there is going to be the, a UK election and then they're going to have, they're going to reduce this period down. So you have that, you know, all the money's got to be in, like I say, by the, all the forms have got to be in, everything's got to be in by the 24th, I think it is, might be the 26th, but I think it's the 24th of April. And there's a lot of other stuff that's got to be in before by the 16th, you know, or just checked off certain things can only, you know, so, so it's going to be a really, really tight thing for me to get that paperwork in. And the hardest thing is going to be for me to raise the money. The five thousand. If you're so, if if you do give me money towards to to help me, then if you're not in the UK, then you have to understand that any money that you donate is going being donated to, towards Dave Dobbs and my endeavours for what I do with the channel and what I do, um, my mission in life. And my mission in life is to stop the breakup of the European Union, and that's what you're helping to fund if you f fund my campaign. You're helping to stop the breakup. I mean, we're going to have some fun with that. I'm going to call the campaign "Kiss," "Kiss for, for, for." I guess "Kiss for Europe," you know, because wherever you meet people in Europe, they they kiss each other, 
and it's a real custom custom thing and so it's called kiss and please you know please make an effort what, what, if you want to support this to when you're with where whatever side you are of the atlantic whoever you greet man or woman if it's man you do it with great respect you don't invade their presence you you put your heads to the side and you give the you know just do it with dignity do it with do it with do it with a theatrical gesture of 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 that it means something that it's symbolic that you feel thereafter that you have been introduced and that you would do no wrong to this person that's what it means by a good introduction it's a fair open on you open yourself to them in kindness and a sweet gen, gen, gesture of, of real friendliness and then it's very difficult to absolutely do someone over when you've been when there's been grace brought into the equation and that's what this introduction is that's why it's so important in places like europe and that sort of stuff because it shows friend it means i come in peace i come not to bring any harm to you it's not a business shaver it's not a donald trumper it's 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 an affectionate meaning that means means i mean you no harm and it's a lovely thing and so if the campaign is called kiss um and i'm gonna to have to run for the southwest there is no bristol ward as such for the european union i'm running for the whole southwest and um but i will push for a wall you know what i mean just to fit that i'm going to call it the great wall it's going to be one of my strong policies not that i'll actually specifically do policies because i've never normally do the word policies because i can i never normally can actually say it normally when i'm doing my kind of more satirical campaigns I, i'm normally a man of manifestos and strictly no because i can never get that word out on stage it seems but um <laughs> but um it's going to be a great wall we're going to build a great wall and it's going to come all the way from bristol out out all the way to glastonbury round to glastonbury and not back it's only a temporary wall by the way it's not on like a big permanent like and it's like a festival wall. hopefully we're going to get michael evers involved to help us kind of like construct it and we're just going to put it up when we have big parties to stop people smuggling kind of like um genetically modified food into into we'll be we'll be like we'll, we'll still be part of england but everything else like that we just have this little zone that will be bristol and kind of coming out to glastonbury which will be remain keep its seat in the european union and if the rest of the country really does want to leave then we can just keep that as the, as the european union but hopefully that we don't have to have that hopefully we'll extend it right out but just it'll be like you know it'll be like having hong kong on sort of like china or having singapore you know they're at the bottom of the bottom of asia there or whatever you know this little kind of like this little trading kind of like free trade zone we'll just we'll we'll just be the we'll, we'll be the last little hub of the european union and and um and i have and i have and and you'll be able to get organic food there you'll be able to get really clean non-genetically modified food there'll be no fracking there'll be no there'll be no not that we, you know we'll, we'll have all the good old all good old european union sort of stuff you know that's kind of away from this being ripped apart by a free trade deal because all of those of you who are out there that have fought for this brexit and said no we want this sovereignty you absolutely know that all the people behind this that have pushed this are all the people that want to sign us up to this free trade agreement and the the you know it's, we, we 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 were fed all this with ttip and ttip you know they fed us all this to see our reaction to this and out of all their reaction to this they this is what they've created brexit is the leading into this they took everything you hated about ttip ttip the transatlantic trade and investment partnership and tpp the trans pacific partnership they fed this big fear monster to us and this big contract in the room and it's all horrible and terrifying and all the information they got from that they use that to calibrate what they have delivered they've run brexit They've, they've this has been a whole mind control thing that's why i say if it david you put david cameron head you know he took us to war against against libya you know he like i say he shot that he shot the puppy on the carpet you know just by calling uh, calling a referendum on europe just absolutely just walking europe the european union out to the sort of like, out to the firing range um it, it's just a, and then saying look there's a good chance the, the soldiers might miss. They're tired. You know, it's not, it's not a sure done thing. It's just literally, this is what the Tories have done by this whole manoeuvre. And then putting Tony Blair as the main rep for Europe. It's vital for Europe. Quite vital for the war on terror. The Britain stays in Europe. We even have Obama coming in saying the same thing, talking in the House of Commons. 
you know, guys, just, just like this, just manipulating us on strings to make us, of course you hated, hated Europe when you saw Tony Blair and sort of like, and David Cameron put up as the main reps. It's so obvious that you would. They, they manipulate us. They manipulate us out of the European le elections in so many ways. Not in the last European elections, but the penultimate one. They, they literally run the expenses scandal all the way through the elections and you were led to believe you hate politicians because they build moats around their castles with the expenses i want nothing to do with them just like you thought about europe when they suddenly suddenly saw david cameron and tony blair as the main kind of puppets at the helm and you're thinking is that europe but of course the expenses scandal just warded people away it's such a massive low turnout and this is how they've controlled it and the only way we're going to do this is by getting involved and we have to see what they're trying to do. They're trying to make you not get involved, not engaged, not in anything. And by the time you realize, oh my God, we could be in this, we could be involved in this and have a voice in this union and still, still get involved. So listen, I, I desperately need help. And what I'm asking you to do is to watch the dates now. We're on the 9th of April now. Have a think about it. Think out, if you live in the UK and you want to help me, if you're in the UK and you want to help me, because I tell you, in, in, if he's helping us, you know, he's bringing a voice and bring all of this stuff in there. And they have to give me a lot more coverage if I'm running in the election. So they have to consider a lot more. The media has to consider a lot more of my message once I actually become a public figure and I start talking about this. And of course, if I bring all of this into this debate, then I'm bringing this into the arena. We're all standing on the outside of the arena. That's why I always do this satirical kind of politics where I've always jumped inside and I've always said, hi guys, you can get involved. And, and this is what we've got to do right now. We've so got to get involved. So look, my light's going. Um, it's, it's the, it's, it's, it, like I say, it's, it, well, it's half, it's half six now. It's just coming up to half six. My light is just about going. Um, you know, it's on all sides of the Atlantic. Anyone who, you know, anyone and everyone who wants to help me understand if you're just, just being clear on that, anyone outside of the UK, if you're helping me, you're helping me in my mission. You're not helping me in my political campaign. You're helping me as Dave Dobbs in his mission to save the European Union and I have to pay tax on, I have to then put that, whatever money you give to me and I give, I, I transfer over to that campaign. I have to pay tax on that money as an income to me and it has to come from me then. So it has to be, it has to be so everything costs like that extra 25% more effectively when it comes from me, but whatever, you know what I mean? We just, if, if there's enough people out there that see what's going on, this affects us on all sides of the of the of the atlantic this is this is a game changer to drive the whole earth into war now to be subverted into war this is the whole big plan now and it all sits on the breakup of the european union if they can break up the european alliance then they can have their war but they are going to struggle to have their war nato will struggle to have its war if um if if the European Union doesn't fall apart. Yeah, we have, we, we got a big, we got some big stuff coming in guys. We, of course we have, but, but we've seen this, Earth has seen this, you know, this thing has come around, not every 3,600 years, it's come around every 169 years. And it's been taken over by capals and institutions that have fed you bullshit all science and bullshit stories to hide this from you and to turn it into something else and to take over this to take over god to institutionalize god to incorporate god which is what is being attempted to to to, to be done by this whole process but this great power is bigger than you can ever realize and you are not its enemy you truly are his greatest creation ultimately you know these are all influences to the earth story that are affecting earth now and you are the true earth story you are earth creation you are of this lineage from this planet yes there's been all sorts of influences down the line but there are influences on this planet and therefore there are influences on you but you are still of the original genetic kind of a story that true
genesis. That divine genesis is still what you are. And so if you still have choices in this, and the last thing I'd say to you is that you think, you know, all the Brexiteers, you know, I'm, I'm trying to heal that gap between both sides here. I'm not trying to, I hear what you were wanting and I hear the reason I'm pro-Europe is not because I am pro-Europe, it's because I am European, number one. And number two, this, when we talk about sovereignty and the, say the Magna Carta, if you were to put times back to the days of the Magna Carta and run it by those rules, we would be, be giving permissions to beat, for every man to beat his wife with a stick no, no, no wider than his thumb or his little finger. You know, these were the sort of like, these were archaic rules. The Magna Carta is not about what's written on the paper. The Magna Carta is the fact that the king recognized that when he went against the sovereign rights of the people, what they stood up for and said, and said, no, this, we will not accept this. When they did and they stood up and we said, we will not accept this. Great power stepped in and shook the, shook the earth. Look at King John, he signed the Magna Carta. You know, great, what made all his treasure just wash away, do you think, just before? He lost everything. Do you remember he was over on the east of the country and supposedly all the ground shook or something and sucked up all his treasure? What terrified him to the point where he suddenly thought, oh, and made him sign the Magna Carta. Think about, you know, we talked about 262, and that was a, then when, we, when we have last kind of like corroborated testimony exactly fitting into my timeline, which exactly fits into Carlos Ferrada's timeline when he made his prediction when Planet X was last man at Massive in 1939. Think about 262 then when there was a three-day solar eclipse, earthquakes across Asia, Europe, um, three, you know, three days of darkness. And... We have all the evidence in the exact sequence in, in, this, in this pathway. So make this, it fits together, or it all just fits together too perfectly. So if we think about that time, you'll notice that the year before, terrible, it was a terrible time for Rome. Rome was crumbling, Rome was falling, and then a massive famine and a plague was ripping through the place. Everything was falling apart in Rome. They knew that they had to change their ways, that this brutal domination could not last anymore. So they had to up their game. And that's why we had the formation of, they became a religion. They turned the whole story into a religion themselves. They took the story of Christ and everything else like that, the very, the very person supposedly they put on the cross and they re-pieced together. So they had control of this again. They institutionalized it. And then you have those that follow in the kind of like in the Gnostic teachings of this, that bring this, that, that bring this, follow their own hearts and, and learn to access the blueprint of this, of this wisdom in their own hearts. Or you have those that follow as a rule book by the Bible and it becomes this hedonistic rule where you just follow an instruction like a complete computer program, a very old program. And we've been stuck in a very old program where we've been instructed of the meaning of the value or, or of the values of someone else's heart, translated through a third party. And we are jumping to just like we saw in 264, just like we saw in or 262. We just just like we saw in, in 1215 when the Magna Carta was signed, just like we saw in what was it 1381 you know peasant revolt what tyler the massive uprising you know henry the second just met with a kind of like a 10 year old kid you know or, or that's not henry the yeah it was henry the second it was like a 10 year old kid kid being met with half of england just standing there and saying and just what what tyler with great respect saying we respect you we we, we respect sov your sovereign rule if you offer us blah 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 you know fair rights and da 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 and he said yes and of course then of course the mayor of london just swings forward with it as if to pat him on the shoulder and say well done laddie and with a dagger concealed in his hand slits what told us what what tied his throat right in front of the king after the king had said yes and of course then everyone was just wiped out the mayor of london he just um he just killed everyone and then extracted information from those he killed and sent this wave of 
destruction that went right up through Britain. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people savagely killed. And uh, and before that, 1264, same thing. 1264, that was, that was, that was what, that was, that was Henry, the, you know, John, John, King John, who signed the Magna Carta in 1215, his son, who thought he'd try and reverse it, um, Henry III, you know, this, this period always fascinates me, you know, I think because I'm from Lewis. And, you know, you know, the, you know, the, that was 1264, the Battle of Lewis, the Battle of Democracy in Britain, and, you know, Lewis, um, who was it? We, we have someone from Lewis who was, um, who's a signatory on, um, on your, on your declaration, declaration of rights, declaration of independence, is it? You know, so excuse me, but the, the top, I'm sure it's Thomas Paine. I'm sure it's Thomas Paine who's a signatory. So we all come from a very small family, you know, that have fought for this, this freedom and these rights. You see, it's not about the bit of paper, it's about what that represents, the power that's behind that, that they would recognize that and sign that. And then, you know, Henry III thinks, oh, that's a crappy piece of paper, I'll just tear that up, and tear that in bits, like, like George Bush, Bush said about the, your, your, your Declaration of Independence, you know, it's like just a piece of paper. This is what... This, this is when we look at it and think it's just a piece of paper. It's what's behind. It's not what's written on that paper right now because that was their story then. This is our story now. And you know we had the you know Lewis had a massive uprising. You know it was geez, four kings: King of England, Henry the Third, his son Longshanks. Look at Longshanks, these were going to the Robin Hood territory and all this sort of stuff, you know, the big bad Longshanks. You, you know, and and uh, and uh, Edward, he'd become Edward the First after after um and then um you know and then and Robert the Bruce was there, fighting for Henry the Third, become King of Scotland, and then you know, King King Henry III's brother, King, not, not Richard Lionheart, but Richard, King of, King of Germany, the richest man in all of Europe with all his armies, all of these kings with all their armies, got defeated supposedly by Simon de Montfort in 1264, he just comes down with his sword, Superman story, bish, bash, bosh, 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 and he just completely and utterly destroys all of these armies and that sort of stuff with a bunch of Londoners. It's a ridiculous story. It's a totally ridiculous story. And then you see Lewis Castle built supposedly on the biggest remains, uh, not Lewis Castle, Lewis Prison, built on the remains, the real most logical, lightly remains. We now see a prison built on the top of the remains of those that fought for our democracy. You know, they, they know that when we come together, we're very powerful. And they're terrified of that. And these agreements that we win, even though sometimes we lose and we get completely mowed down by them, when we come together, um, not necessarily in revolution, because that was a revolution. Maybe Gandhi, maybe we need to take the, sort of like the, big, the, ah, the big R out of that and take the R of revolution and just turn it and just have evolution. You know, you take this up an evolutionary step and see what Gandhi did by instead of going into war, into peace, instead of going into vision, going into unity. You know, let's let's see another perspective of all of these people down the line have been fighting against the king and the queen and their grab for power, these big institutional powerful families that run these have this enormous power and run this kind of like you know you saw the same thing in america you saw you know the you know your the, the american civil war you know you saw you saw what that what was really kind of like they you saw it as kind of like you know the liberation of sort of like recognizing that that the black people were sort of like that the, the, they, they, they had human rights and they were they weren't slaves, but actually that was the carrot on the end of the string that was fighting the fight, but the real fight was the corporations to be recognized also as human beings through this same war. 
So you were given one right, but it actually that when that when the contract was changed, it gave also corporations the same power. So corporations became as powerful as people, which means that to the corporation, it wasn't that blacks had rights, it's that everyone had fallen into economic slavery to the corporations by that. They had it not that more people have been liberated from slavery. Actually, the bracket had actually got bigger. <laughs> the slavery bracket had actually gone bigger. And this whole process is an attempt to take that whole slavery bracket even bigger. And so it causes for, it come, it call, it, it calls for a different type of evolutionary jump. Not war, because war cannot, this earth cannot take this type of war that we wage. It cannot take the depleted uranium, the nuclear bombs, the, 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 the type of warfare, the chemical warfare, the, the, the trauma, the destruction, the toxicity of the whole thing is too much for this, this, this type of, this delicate ecosystem to take now. We have reached a wall on every front now. And the only way of taking this plane further is by going into peacetime, not going into wartime. And every attempt is being done to subvert humanity, take us into war right now. You can see it at every front. You need to engage in something. And if you watch my channel, then I'm asking you to assist me now and say, no, nah, I'm going to help Dave out. It's going to cost me, if all my, you know, can we just try a little experiment for all those of you who made it just this far? I'll get, up, I'll, I'll, I'll get a PayPal link. Can we just see what happens if as many as, of you as possible can just chuck in, just buy PayPal or something? Because I can't do GoFundMe because they won't give me the money. They just won't give me the money. And so the only way I can do this is by PayPal. Um, because they, they, they'll stop, they've stopped, you know, they make my views look as if I'm getting no views at all. Maybe I'm really not. But, um, but if everyone who's, who's really following me, who's a, who's, a real keen, um, who's a real keen supporter of what I'm doing and thinks, no, this isn't about Dave. This is about, I see what Dave's doing and there's not many people who are going to help Dave. There are not. They're just going to think it's, most people out there just think this is totally balmy. They cannot see Planet X. And they've been so locked into just, no, that can't be true. And they're so kind of protected from it by so many different things, like climate change. I could be, I'm seen as a climate change denier because I, I, challenge, I challenge the story that carbon dioxide is the main cause of all this problem. Is if It's just not the natural side effects of something like this going by. And it's a regular occurrence in, 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 in the Earth story. Although I am of a mind that war and aggression draws the whole planet X system into us and, ex and exacerbates terrible things on this planet because it does not accommodate war and it will wipe war off this planet and that's what it does that is its purpose is to keep this on a, on a clean level playing ground because what that would created earth if earth spawns into war and it goes everywhere then that which created that has spawned war everywhere and so this can this has to contain war on this planet else or else it is a war and it is not at war this is just a little tiny story, but this has to be a bow and arrow story if this is going to go on. This has just got to be bows and arrows, and sort of like a and and and, and pitchforks, you know. If if it stays on this frequency, that's you know this is what Einstein said. If the, if the fourth world war starts with or third world war starts with sorry nuclear nuclear bombs, that the 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 fourth world war starts with bows and arrows. It's that simple. It's that obvious. And so. You know, if every person just right now, up until the up until the up until the twelfth, donates just a, 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 a few a few dollars, a few quid, and that sort of stuff, because we're in the pre-election campaign point right now. Like I say, you, like I say, you are donating towards me on the on this, unless you're in the UK and you, and you want to specifically give some funds to me, towards me towards paying this five thousand. If you're in the UK and you're on the electoral roll, I don't, I don't, I think you have to be on the electoral roll. I think you have to be a UK or European citizen, maybe. So it can be open to anyone in Europe as well. I think they can. Um, uh, maybe that's maybe that's not true. 
I'll, I'll um I'll, I'll put an overlay on the screen there when I come to that when, when we come to that bit just to say if there's anyone in the European Union because maybe you've got to be in the United Kingdom to fund directly the campaign but you can help me in my mission but you can't fund a political campaign as such and so I definitely can't receive funds during that period after when the electoral when the expenses period starts on the 24th the money five thousand pounds has to be paid that from that period till the end of till the election is the kind of like is the controlled election period and that's very tight so I can't take any funds in between that figure from other outside outside of the UK um, and from people yeah but so it's, it's all up to that point now I suppose I but but like I say you are helping me and I got to make that clear and I have made that clear um, you know, and, it, and then I have to pay, I have to pay tax on whatever income that goes in. So like I say, it costs that, that much more, but um, no, it's, it's like, it's going to be like 25% more or something like that. But it's, um, it's, that's the only legal route of doing it. So, um, long video, sorry about this. Sorry, it's a long, long rant, but, um, hopefully, you know, I go on about the same things I know I do, but it's so important that we get through this point. It's such a massive thing to get through, and so I am like like an old record. But um, this is X Master Spot, and this is right where it is. This is this is this is this is the weakest link in the chain. And when you forget that once that chain is broken, it causes a chain reaction, and that chain reaction um, it can be. You know, it's a whole different line of karma, karmic events unfold once we leave Europe, once we depart. Um, it changes. It changes the karma for Great Britain greatly, I'm afraid. It changes the karma for the world greatly. Take care.